aiding and abetting a massive act of theft, people should be concerned about this. You get all the fish you want, you have no idea where it's coming from. Any of it frozen once, two, three, four times, all kinds of additives. At your supermarket butcher, the parts from a single chicken will run you more than $7. To raise that bird, the grower was paid 36 cents. The supply cannot meet the demand. Consumers are eating a product that is not honey. Nearly half of food allergy deaths are caused by food from restaurants. Our bodies are rejecting the food we eat. And even the experts don't really know why. There has to be someone that's willing to keep the fight alive. This is all about making as big profits as possible. This room, you're looking at half a million dollars. Working hard isn't enough. Now you also have to work smart. People will start to realize how wrong this is. Are anybody's hands clean in this whole thing? Nobody's hands are clean. If you eat food, this is an issue you need to worry about. That's a look at the new Netflix documentary series, Rotten, which explores corruption in the food underworld from farm to plate. Christine Hawney is an agriculture reporter for Politico, and she spent three years overseeing investigative reporting for the series. Christine, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. When you watch that, it seems more like an opening for a, a crime drama. When you see that, you investigated everything from chicken to seafood. What was the most eye-opening part of this investigation? Um, it, there are so many eye-opening kind of elements to this. The fact that no matter how much investigating you're doing and how I've been doing this for years, that there is still so much to dig into in this industry because of the supply chain, because of like the fact that all of our food is very global now. So um, it was very eye-opening to see what happens to our seafood. Three years in, there are still some things that I'll eat but don't eat and could not always tell you where some of our seafood comes from. So it's incredible. After watching this, how has it changed the way you you eat food and how you shop for food. It's made me more aware of it, but it's been a very circular experience. At first, there was food I just avoided and said, I'm never eating that again. But then there also is this element of, as as a mom, as a person, you can only control what you eat so much. You still have to put dinner on the table. The, I thought it was really interesting in that clip, it talked about, you know, our bodies are rejecting the food now. Yes. And as you know, as a mother and as I know, if you have other kids over to play, it usually involves an EpiPen. There's food allergies that are just running rampant. The second episode talks about the food allergies. Let's play that and then talk about it on the other side. Something in our world is changing. Our bodies are rejecting the food we eat. And even the experts don't really know why. When I started looking at food allergy, it was shocking that we knew so little about food allergies. Now this is 12 years ago. We didn't even know how many kids had food allergies. Those numbers were not being collected. Chicago pediatrician Ruchi Gupta has spent the last decade tracking this worldwide trend. A surge in food allergies, especially among children. It was just starting to get noticed. You started hearing it more and more, but yet we still didn't understand the extent of the problem. We have eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fin fish, shellfish, uh, sesame seeds, and legumes. The list, it goes on and on. What did doctors tell you? Why are we seeing so many more food allergies? We actually don't have a clear answer, uh, even though we've been spending months investigating this. Um, we do know that things like peanuts are um, are coming from the earth where there's a lot of pesticides that, been, that have been used. Also, we know that it's a good thing if your body is rejecting these things. It's kind of like a natural thing that happens. But there are a lot of theories, and we don't have good answers to why so many kids are still getting sick. You found in the investigation that nearly half of food allergy deaths are caused by food from restaurants or other food services. That's pretty alarming. How has that changed the food industry or has it? There's still a lot that needs to be done within the food industry, and we have this wonderful kind of tension between chefs in our episode where we have one chef whose child nearly died from food allergies and how he's completely changed the way he runs his business. We also spoke with a chef in Brooklyn who has kind of like a fabulous restaurant but talks about how much money he can lose if he actually tries to make any plates that cater to people with allergies. How is this affecting farmers? Farmers are... Um, 
really struggling these days. It, it's kind of a fascinating moment and they're trying to embrace whatever they can. For example, in our dairy episode, farmers are having trouble with just kind of traditional milk, so they're going into areas like raw milk. But raw milk can be deadly and it's outlawed in many states. So that's just one example of how they're trying new things, but it all can also push them into like areas of illegal behavior. There was one part in one of the episodes you uncovered a sh shadowy garlic business that was actually routed through Chinese prisons. Tell me about that. That was really fascinating reporting. A lot of the peeled garlic that we consume in the U.S., um, there that we do have reporting that shows that it's peeled by Chinese prison labor and then shipped through to the U.S. And we got video footage from China to kind of verify that. And what does that mean for what we're putting into our bodies? Well, in that case, um, with the Chinese prisoners, they actually, their, their fingernails fall off from peeling garlic all day because it's so acidic. So they're using the teeth, their teeth to peel the garlic that you then buy in those large containers at they're supermarkets. They're peeling their, the garlic with their teeth? With their teeth, yes. What are you hoping? I mean, that's hard to swallow right there. Just listening <laughs> to that part, it's kind of hard to go on from there. But what are you hoping people take away after watching this series? When you hear something like that, people peeling garlic with their teeth. I'm hoping that people watch this and they kind of they start demanding more from their regulators and their food companies and they start asking more questions. It's really hard to just, you know, to do all this research on what you eat, but if you can even ask one or two more questions, it might save your life and your loved ones' lives. All right, Christine, thank you so much. Fascinating thank series, you. great investigation. We really appreciate you stopping by.